tickets for the 2022 World Cup qualifier between Ireland and Portugal are being sold on the website via GoGo for more than three times the original asking price. And this is despite the fact that we supposedly have uh, anti-ticket touting legislation in place. Well, we do have it in place, but as we will find out today, it doesn't seem to apply to the Aviva Stadium uh, or this particular match. So tickets went on sale yesterday. They were sold out in minutes, but just hours later, they appeared on uh, Via Gogo with massively inflated prices. The original asking price for tickets for the match ranged from €40 Euro to €120 Euro for the most expensive seats. Tickets on the resale website this morning started €188 Euro and go as high as €419. Euro. Now, we've uh, received a number of statements um, from the, for example, the FAI said that they are aware the tickets for the Portugal match are currently being offered for resale at inflated prices online and we remind fans who purchase tickets from a third party website or any unauthorised seller that they risk not receiving a ticket at all or being denied entry with an invalid a ticket. We urge fans not to purchase tickets from these sources. And then the website in question via GoGo have also uh, sent us in a statement and in their statement interestingly they say it is not illegal for tickets to be resold in Ireland this can apply to designated venues which this venue is not i.e. the uh, Aviva Stadium it can also apply to standalone events and no application has been forthcoming for the Portugal match uh, Via Gogo does not set ticket prices these are set by the people who use the platform to resell their tickets anyway basically in their, in their statement they're saying we've done nothing wrong here because the Aviva Stadium isn't a designated um, uh, venue nor is the match a designated event so What's the law actually achieving? That's what we're going to try and find out today. We do have new anti-ticket touting legislation, uh, but certainly for this match, and I believe for the upcoming Ireland-New Zealand match, um, because the Aviva Stadium hasn't been designated as a venue, um, it doesn't apply to them. So we're going to try and find out uh, a little bit more about this. Aon Arirdon is the Labour spokesperson for education and TD for uh, Dublin Bay North, and he's on the line with me. Aon, what's after happening here? Well, I think clearly the legislation isn't working the way it should be working. What the minister needs to do is to designate a number of uh, of venues around the country. There already are five that are designated, um, <laughs> mainly in Cork and Limerick uh, and Vicar Street in Dublin. Uh, Musgrave Park, uh, Tomlin Park uh, are, are amongst the five. So what needs to happen here is that Lansdowne Road needs to be designated, Crow Park needs to be designated. I can. And I can, how is it that that I, wouldn't I, have happened? I don't know. I mean, I, I can assume from the from the FBI's point of view, maybe they they made a calculation that that this wouldn't be sold out. Um, you know, in the most recent games, there was only half the attendance, and and those games were, weren't sold out. The Serbia game or the Azerbaijan game. So, mm. so I, I, perhaps that maybe came came into their into their thinking. The Ronaldo factor probably has changed things, and certainly the the improved performances of the team has have changed things as well. However. There is a dynamic when you, if you do go to a game at Lansdowne Road of an element of buying or selling tickets, uh, you know, that those sort of chance that takes place outside a game. So, so there is that kind of dynamic that surrounds international soccer games. I can't speak to rugby as much, but I certainly know that that happens to soccer internationals. So uh, the cleanest and neatest thing for the minister to do now is just to designate Lansdowne Road uh, 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 as at the designated um, uh, stadium, Crow Park being similar, Tallis Stadium being similar, uh, and to engage with the various different sporting organisations to see whether they have an objection to this or not. And that okay, so it's, it seems clear to me that the fault in this case um, is either with the FAI or uh, the Aviva Stadium, Lansdowne Road, that they didn't apply uh, to be included in this. So that has allowed, and, and Via Gogo in their statement very clearly say, we're not doing anything wrong here because it's not a designated venue. Well, that's all very well for Via Gogo to say that, uh, but I think uh, anybody would appreciate that the type of activity that happens on that uh, on that website. To be honest, it, it, it wouldn't sit comfortably with me. I think what we, what we want to have in any big sporting occasion big musical occasion is that people buy their tickets at face value they enjoy the they enjoy the event they create a relationship between them between themselves and the and the seller of the ticket be, be the fei there are a few or, or the ga or whoever uh, 
and, and they enjoy the event on that basis. Having a third party involved takes away from it. Uh, I think what we need now is, is a very clean and very clear uh, designation of Lansdowne Road and other sporting event, uh, venues around the country. And so we won't have to have this issue again. I can appreciate that as well. Look, this is new legislation that only came in in July. You know, there's always going to be teething problems. Uh, and perhaps it was, was unforeseen that an Ireland Portugal game would be completely sold out within minutes. Maybe some people might say it was foreseen. But anyway, given the pattern of, uh, of ticket sales for Ireland games over the last two years, it might. And obviously, we, they haven't been playing in front of crowds for, for 18 months, mm. but it might be suggested that it, it wasn't be foreseen. But anyway, we can only deal with, what, with the situation we have now. What happens now is that the, the minister intervenes, designates Stands and Road and other sporting venues, and so we don't have this problem again. Now, just on uh, Via Gogo, in their statement, they say, we're committed to complying with all legal obligations under this Act, as we have done since it was commenced. We continue to engage with the department to ensure full compliance. So they're literally uh, throwing the ball back to uh, the department and saying, look, this isn't really our fault, it's your own fault. Or it's... That's fine, that's fine. And, and, you know, and they are legally uh, compliant. But I think what the what government has to do and what politics has to do is to is to protect the consumer uh, and to protect, I suppose, the child who wants to go to these games without fear of having a dud ticket or without their family going into huge financial expense in order to fulfil those dreams. I mean, mm. look, I remember going to my first game in 1987. I know how much it meant to me. Um, but, you know, these things are expensive. If you have a family which has, you know, two adults and a number of children, it is a massive financial, uh, you know, outlay in order to attend uh, matches. That's, even if you live in Dublin, if you have to travel up from the country, it's an, it's an added expense and there might even be overnight as well. So, look, this is, this is not a, a small thing for families to try and do. And if they found, find themselves being gouged for a couple of extra hundred euro, it takes away from the entire experience. And, do do you, you know, see you, a place are, for... Are, sorry, Aon, do, do you see a place for websites like Viagogo to continue to exist? Because some would argue, you know, there can be genuine reasons for needing to resell a ticket that, you you know, you find you can't go. Well, I, I, I honestly say, um, look, if, if somebody has a ticket and, and they want to sell it on at face value, you know, that's fair enough. But if they're trying to make uh, money out of it, I don't think that is fair enough. And, and you will always get bad actors walking into the space. I mean, we can always assume that somebody just wants, has a ticket, has an extra ticket, wants to, wants to get rid of it, uses an internet, internet website, and, uh, and, and there's no harm in that. However, in all these circumstances, there's always bad actors who walk into this space, who get multiple tickets, take them away from fans, and then try to pr- try to profit off it. These should be special memories uh, for families and for young people and for sports fans uh, or music fans. They shouldn't be something that you have to be, you know, second guess all the time. And in this regard, I think the relationship between the the, the you know the, the, the sporting organisation and the fan is key. Having a third party involved in that, I think, is is not something that that, that is uh, that, that is desirable. Let me ask you about your your confidence in the legislation itself, which was brought in earlier this year, and in theory it was to do away with ticket touting. Just this message came in just a moment ago from Linda, and she says, surely all they have to do is take the term designated venue out of the legislation. This would ensure that all tickets are covered under the legislation. I think the problem there is that sometimes we wanted to ensure that, that, that a club could have a raffle or a charity event could have a raffle. Um, you know, there may be a situation where somebody has two tickets for a big event and they want to raise money for charity. So in order to facilitate that, we wanted to make sure that the designation came in. And I thought that was fair enough because in all these circumstances, whenever you bring in legislation, people will make their own submissions from their own circumstances and say, well, actually, this is going to limit our capacity to raise money for, for, for X uh, or Y event. Or, okay, or so that makes a little bit of sense. That. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so, so, ge- so generally so the, speaking... So the, 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 Generally speaking, do you believe do you believe that this legislation, if it's properly uh, enforced, but with the likes of the Aviva applying for designation, it will work in the long run? Well, you see, the, the legislation assumes that the sporting organisation or the music uh, or the music venue or uh, the department or the minister are going to be proactive. And what happened in this circumstance is that they weren't. Mm. And so the legislation is only going to uh, it, it's only going to work if people are proactive. Uh, and can foresee events. I can foresee a situation, for example, with the growing, um, with the growing uh, popularity of the women's soccer team of, se- of se- uh, sold out events in Tallaght Stadium, and uh, and a similar situation happening where you know a young fan wants to see Katie McCabe or the Irish women's soccer team. There's only eight thousand uh, you know tickets available, and all of a sudden you know there's inflated prices. So these things have to be preempted and and foreseen. And so a number of of sporting venues around the country. We have five. 
we can increase that number, the, the five that are that, that are on the list, in, uh, you know, uh, can be can be increased to include, include Crow Park, which mm-hmm. isn't on the list, uh, Lansdowne Road, which isn't on the list, you know, Daily Mount, be it um, uh, be it Tower Stadium uh, or wherever, and then we won't have the situation emerging again. 